Hi everybody, Ted Jordan here with Professional Acting for the Long Haul. Now this week we're going to be talking about should you pay your agent a commission? Now that question was asked by an agent on one of the social media sites that I'm on and she just asked it as an open-ended question. You should have seen the responses that a lot of actors gave and frankly for me a lot of it was given out of fear. Now that's just my opinion. Now let's get to it. Should you actually give your agent a commission when he or she did not actually work for it or earn it? Meaning that they did not negotiate a good deal for you or a deal period, okay? Not a good or bad deal, just did they did they negotiate a good deal for you? All right, so not a good deal, but did they negotiate the deal for you? Did they negotiate the deal? Okay, now if they did, Apparently, they worked for it, so you owe them a commission, whether it's 10%, 15%, 20%, whatever your contract says. Now, remember what I just said, contract. What does your contract say? Now, there was an actor who said on the social media site that I was on, answering this question, he said he didn't have a contract with his agent. Well, it sounds like to me there's no meeting of the minds. So that agent, he or she, could do whatever they wanted to do without the actor knowing exactly what was happening to them. And this actor thought it was okay just to give uh, their agent uh, an extra $15 because they didn't negotiate the deal. Didn't make sense to me at all. Again, you're in business. You're in business to make money, but you're also in business and people want to do business with those who have character and integrity. So if you do owe according to your contract, which is non-exclusive, let's just say that for a minute. If it's a non-exclusive contract, now this could happen in any state in the union. Usually it's gonna happen a lot of times in New York or LA in those markets. If that is the case, then that's what you owe. You should give them what they owe because that's what you obligated yourself to from the contract standpoint. You need to read it if you don't know what it says. Shame on you if you don't. Again, that's why I'm doing these videos. I'm not giving you how to, to act in front of the camera. You got plenty of folks out there doing that. What we don't have enough of is people sharing the business act with you. You need to understand how to handle your business. First and foremost, read your contract. What does it say? If it says you're non-exclusive, that means you can work with other agents within that market or anywhere in the country. If it's exclusive, then read that and find out what you owe your agent if you go out and get jobs on your own, which you can still do, but what I've seen in exclusive contracts that I've signed, they still want you to pay them a percentage, which I think sucks. If they're not working for it, they haven't earned it. Are they giving you a bonus at the end of the year when you know, you've been their client or their talent or however they want to categorize you? Are they giving you a bonus check at the end of the year for doing such a great job? No. Why? Because they're not obligated to. Again, I want you to start thinking like a business owner. You own your talents, gifts, and abilities, and you need to make sure that people aren't treating you poorly. They're not treating you like a tool, a thing, or anything like that. You're a human being. You're a professional. You need to act like it. You need to come off like it. Again, like a jerk? No. But you don't let people push you around. This is the other part of the thing that we're talking about, too, as an example. The Harvey Weinstein thing, and then Kevin Spacey, and all these other people that are, you know, now being accused of what they've been doing for such a long time. This is not a surprise. There are a lot of people who have been doing this for a long time. But you know what stopped a lot of people? The actors, mainly, who have been injured by this, and it was only actors. I don't I have never heard of any agents or producers or other directors, you know, trying to sexually harass themselves. I've not seen that nor heard that. It's mainly been actors, okay? So let's start there. The complicity. The agents, or the actors rather, were scared to step out and share with those people around them, some of them, and if they did share it, then they got shut down by their agents or the producer or the director or the studio because they didn't want this out. And if you decided to blow the whistle, you weren't going to be working in this town again, whatever that town might be. Let's say it's Hollywood. 
Hollywood, again, is notorious for covering things up and not letting things out. And if you have whistleblowers, unlike right now, then you're usually blacklisted for a while or forever. It's happened before. Now suddenly everyone's starting to come out about this thing. The fear of. The fear of is a terrible place to live because you're scared of loss. Don't ever be afraid of loss. There are a lot of opportunities out there. And you're here to take advantage of those opportunities, not have people take advantage of you, whether it's sexual harassment or money. If you don't owe people money, you don't have to give it to them. Not unless you just want to say thank you for a job well done, then that's a whole different thing. But don't respond out of fear because you think your agent will be mad at you because you went out, you worked hard, you got the prospect, you booked the job on your own, and you had a non-exclusive contract, and now you get to keep the money. It's nice to keep that extra 20% or 10% or whatever it is if you negotiated for yourself a good deal and it's non-exclusive. Please, please, please pay attention to the details of what I'm talking about because these details are very important, okay? So don't operate out of fear. If it's non-exclusive and you go out and you have the right to negotiate your own deals without your agent, if you feel comfortable in doing that, then you don't owe them anything. If you want to give them something, fine, but I think it's foolish to give away money if you don't have to. Give it to your church. Give it to other charitable organizations. Your agency is not a charitable organization. It's a business just like you're in business to generate income. Again, I say this. If you owe it through a, an exclusive contract, then you better well give it to them because they owe it. And that's what, your, that's what your contract says you should do. You should always be a person of integrity. You should always do the right thing for yourself whenever possible. And it should always be possible, even when sometimes it's not popular or difficult. Now, I hope this has been a help to you. I hope this eases some tensions that are going around that you have a right to do things. You have a right to say yes. You have a right to say no. You have a right to refuse things and you have a right to not be pushed in the corner by an agent who doesn't want to, you know, force the client to do the right thing because I've had that happen. Here's an example before I go. I was doing a job in New Orleans and um, this client was very chintzy. I've never had this happen before or since. They didn't want to pay the hour for lunch. I've never had that before. So they wanted to deduct that from what they owed me from my daily rate. You know what my agent told me? Well, just go ahead and go along with it because, you know, you'll get, you know, you might get some gigs in the future. You know what happened? I've never gotten those gigs. Anytime an agent ever says that to you, just go ahead and walk away and say, hey, look, make sure these people give me what's owed to me and not try to cheat me. You have a right to speak to your agent that way. You're a human being. You're an adult. Or if you're a parent of a child actor, you need to be their best advocate because you're the one that cares about them, loves them, and watches over them, or at least you should be. You shouldn't just hand everything over to your agent. Do your homework, do your studying, and make sure people are not taking advantage of your talents, gifts, and abilities. Okay. Again, I hope this was helpful to you and I hope this gives you the fortitude to stand up for yourself when things get a little rough. Again, when you stand up for yourself, people respect you. They may not show you right off. They may get mad at you, but so what? If they don't want to be around you because you stuck up and did the right thing, those are people you don't need to be around in the first place. All right. Have a great weekend. Have a great day. Wherever you're you know, checking this out at, by all means, professional acting for the long haul at yahoo.com. If you have any questions or comments, you can check out our website at crossingjordanentertainment.studio and check out my IMDb page. Whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you soon.